So I just went to a local comic book show and I found some incredible books in the dollar bin. But there is much more to the story. Stay tuned. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to today's video. So like I mentioned, I just went to a local comic book show, but I made the last minute decision of trying to get a table there to sell comics. I messaged the guy that runs the show. Uh, he owns a local comic book shop called Comic Lair, and his name is Chad, and he's a really great guy. And he got back to me right away and uh, let me know that there was actually a table available last minute because somebody canceled. So I was able to get a table there, set up, and try to sell some comics. And it went fabulous. I ended up selling quite a few books. I made a few dollars, which was great. Now I can reinvest it into the hobby. And I was able to move a whole bunch of those books that I pulled out of my personal collection. You may have seen the videos where I took so many books over 40 short boxes worth of comics out of my personal collection and decided to sell them. So this was the first time I was able to go to a show and uh, set up and try to sell those books. And I sold a few boxes worth, which was outstanding. Really excited about that. But I also was going around, you know, seeing what other vendors had available. And the uh, vendor right next to me, who is an awesome guy named Chris, he owns Conquest Comics, which is also local to me. It's one of the shops that I go to pretty frequently and find incredible books in his dollar bin. And he had about 20 or 30 long boxes, all dollar books. And I found some incredible stuff. Uh, I'm going to show you that in a minute. But I also just picked up a couple books from uh, Whatnot, from an awesome seller. Let's take a look at those real quick, and then I'll show you everything I found in the dollar bin at this local comic show. So I was over on Whatnot, and I just purchased a few books from Chelectables. He's an amazing seller. He's on Instagram. He's on Whatnot. Uh, definitely check him out because he always has a, an amazing selection of books for sale. Uh, so I was able to go on his show. Uh, he was selling all Silver Age Marvel books. He was starting the auctions off at $1, and I got a nice little stack of books at some incredible prices. The first one here is Strange Tales 122 from 1964. This is the first full appearance of Nightmare. Uh, he graded this at a VG, and I got this for only $23. I think that was a really good price for this book here. Just a nice early Strange Tales to add to the collection. And uh, I think he uh, grades pretty conservative. Uh, he called it a VG, but it's a really, really sharp looking copy. I also picked up Strange Tales issue 125. This is from 1964. This is a classic battle uh, between Human Torch and the Thing versus Namor. Uh, he graded this at a VG minus, and I got this for $20. It's a really nice looking book. It's got some spine wear, uh, but for the price, I think that was awesome. Always happy to add some nice early Silver Age Marvel to the collection. Really cool book. I also picked up Strange Tales issue 151. This is from 1966. Uh, he graded this at a VG minus. And this is the first published artwork by Jim Steranko for Marvel Comics. Pretty awesome book here. I'm a huge Steranko fan. I love his artwork. This is his first published Marvel artwork, which is really, really cool. And I got this for only $10. I think that was an incredible steal. Uh, really excited to add this one to the collection. It's got a really cool cover. Can't go wrong with some cool uh, Steranko artwork. I also picked up Strange Tales, issue 168. Uh, this is from 1968. And it's got an awesome cover, and I ended up getting this for only $10 as well. Not a bad deal for some, some early uh, Marvel Strange Tales books. Love me some Silver Age. Awesome book here. Uh, man, really awesome. And then I also picked up Tales to Astonish, featuring Submariner and the Incredible Hulk, issue number 76. This is from 1966. Uh, he graded this at a fine minus. And it has just an awesome Gene Colan cover. And I ended up getting this for $5. 
It's a pretty sharp looking book. It has a little grease pencil up on the uh, Comics Code Authority, but really besides that and some spine ticks, but for the age 1966, uh, and it's a really sharp looking book, especially for five bucks. Really excited about that one. And the last one that I got here from Collectibles is Tales to Astonish, issue number 92. This is from 1967. He graded this at a VG. Uh, and honestly, it's not a key or anything, but it's just an awesome Dan Adkins cover. Um, I mean, I love with the creature on there and, and Namor. It does also have a little grease pencil on, the, on Namor's face there. Uh, but featuring it, I mean, it is just a really, really cool monster character. And uh, excited to grab this. I got this for only $5. Super good deals. Really excited about all these purchases. And I definitely have to say that Collectibles is a class act because all of the books are in Mylar's, also in the ultra thick backing boards. And then he also does his little stamp here and he grades it. He writes, you know, what's going on and why he graded it, what he did put a little uh, sticker there to seal it. I mean, how classy is that? I feel like all comic book sellers need to do this. If they're going to sell like some decent books, you know, I mean, I only paid $5 for this, uh, but still it's a cool silver age book and just having it in the thick backing board with a Mylar, I just feel like just shows that you are a classy seller. So shout out to, to Collectibles awesome books, and I got some incredible deals. All right, now let's take a look at what I found in the dollar bin at this local comic book show. So as I mentioned, the vendor right next to me was Chris from Conquest Comics in Bayville, New Jersey. He's got an awesome shop. I always find great stuff at his dollar bins over at his shop, but he had like 30 or more long boxes, and they were all a dollar a piece. And I found some really incredible books, some really cool stuff. Uh, starting off with Marvel Chillers, issue number two. Uh, this is the second appearance of Modred the Mystic. Uh, this is from 1976. Just a classic, uh, you know, Bronze Age horror Marvel book. Excited to add this one to the collection. Um, most of these are kind of low grade, but there's a couple that are actually pretty high grade as well. This one I'm going to say is like mid grade. It's got a little tape pull right there, a little color pull. Uh, it gives a cleaning, uh, but for a buck, I think that was an incredible deal. So Marvel Chillers issue number two. I also found Worlds Unknown issue number five. Uh, this is from 1974. It's not a key or anything, but it's just got that awesome Bronze Age artwork. I love the covers on Bronze Age horror and sci-fi books. It's pretty much my favorite thing to collect. Uh, if you've seen any of my videos over the last couple of years, you know I'm a huge fan of horror, especially Bronze Age horror and anything with some like fun artwork, great covers. Uh, this one, you know, just another great one to add to my collection. This one's a little bit more lower grade. Uh, but for a dollar, why not? You know, I had to grab it. More Bronze Age horror. How about Where Creatures Roam? Issue number eight. Uh, this is from 1971. This one's pretty low grade. It's got a lot of spine wear. It's got some dog ears and little rips on the corners. Um, it's pretty rough. Uh, but still, it's got an awesome cover with this giant mummy popping out of a pyramid. Um, 1971, nice little Bronze Age horror, 15 cent book. And I think this is the final issue in this uh, little run, this little series. So really, really cool. Can't beat it for a dollar. Moving on to some DC Bronze Age horror. We have Weird Mystery Tales, issue number 16. Uh, this is from 1975. It's got a really cool cover with the scarecrow and the little kids hiding. I mean, just an awesome uh, cover. Uh, great artwork. It almost has like a Bernie Wrightson look to it. It's not Bernie Wrightson. Uh, I don't remember who the artist was, but just a really cool book. Uh, this one's like a lower mid grade. You know, it's got some issues up there, but a great dollar bin find if you ask me. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Jonah Hex. I don't know. I just, I love Jonah Hex and I am a huge fan of collecting the run, and I needed this one, and it's got such an awesome cover. Uh, this one is in pretty decent shape, not really too many spine ticks, 
um, especially for a all black cover. But check out this awesome like cover with the rattlesnake. I mean, how cool is that? This is Jonah Hex issue number 80 from 1984. And it's just got uh, some really great uh, Dick Ayers artwork. So can't complain for a dollar. It's a newsstand. It's got a nice little, um, you know, a nice look to it. Really nice condition. And I just, I love the artwork and I love the story. Big fan of Jonah Hex. Uh, this one is kind of funny, kind of interesting. Um, I'm a, also a big fan of like cartoon or toy related comic books. Uh, this is Animax issue number one. It's high, it's, well, it's not high grade. It's got a little, a little dirt up top, uh, but no spine ticks. Pretty, pretty decent shape though. Uh, cool yellow background. Uh, this is from 1986 and uh, Walt Simonson did all the writing on this book. So pretty cool. Can't go wrong with a little Animax, and it's the issue number one. Nice little dollar bin find. Uh, this next book here is just a classic cover. Uh, Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider-Man, issue 112 from 1986. It's got a classic Kyle Baker cover with Santa Claus smoking a cigarette, holding a double-barreled <laughs> pistol. Like it's just, it's just so classic. I love this cover. Uh, it's actually in really high grade. Um, there's like a little spine tick right there, but that's pretty much it. Uh, and it's funny because I actually bought this book because I was hoping uh, that a buddy of mine who I see at local shows all the time was going to stop by. Uh, you know, I wasn't sure if he was going to the show or not, but uh, I promised him this book. I was going to give him this book like a couple years ago now. It's been a while, and I just haven't been able to meet up with him and give him the book. So I was hoping he was going to make it to the show, and I would I would just give him this book because it's really high grade. Um, of course, he didn't show up, but I'm going to hold on to it in case I see him again. Um, you know, if you're watching the video, buddy, hit me up, and I definitely owe you this book. But still, a great dollar bin find. And moving on to the last book from the dollar bin was this. It's not a key. Uh, but to find a Marvel Spotlight Ghost Rider book in a dollar bin, I think is incredible. This is issue number 11 from 1973, and I believe this is the second appearance of Witch Woman. Uh, issue number 10 was the first appearance of Witch Woman, so I'm assuming this next issue is her second appearance. It's got a pretty cool cover, and this book is in great shape. Uh, there's really not much spine wear or spine ticks. Um, of course, it's got a white background, so it could probably use a cleaning and a press. Uh, but finding this in a dollar bin, Marvel Spotlight Ghost Rider books for a buck. I mean, I think that is a killer, killer deal. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about all these books that I found in the dollar bin. Let me know down in the comments. What do you think? Uh, I, uh, I, I'm pretty excited. Happy to add these all to my collection. So I ended up getting a couple really cool toys at this show as well. There were multiple vendors selling vintage toys, and I found this little guy here. This is a vintage knockoff or bootleg Street Shark, which I'm a huge fan of Street Sharks. I have a nice little collection, and um, you know I've been collecting them for a while. I used to have them when I was a kid, and I'm just buying them whenever I see them at a good price, but they actually sell for quite a bit. Uh, here's a regular street shark. As you see, this one, this bootleg, is a much smaller scale. And uh, this one has like some rubbery kind of uh, feel to it. This one is all hard plastic. It's got a little bit of a glossy look to it. It has articulation on the arms only. And how cool is this guy here? Really, really awesome. I'm really excited to add this one to the collection. I paid up on this one. I paid $40 for it. But honestly, for a bootleg, I would never, probably never find this ever again out in the wild. Um, and I've never seen it before. So one of my buddies that sells vintage toys, I bought a few things from him. Um, and he had this and I had to pick it up. I also picked up two other things from him as well. Let's take a look at those. So I ended up getting these two X-Men play sets. These are so cool. I actually had these when I was a kid. And I saw them, my buddy had them for sale, and he offered them to me for an incredible price. And I just had to jump on it, especially since I had these growing up. 
I remember buying these off the shelf at this store that's no longer around. I, I can't even remember what it was called, uh, but I used to buy a lot of like X-Men figures and stuff there. And this is the uh, Danger Room, the Wolverine Combat Cave. How awesome is this? It's sealed in the box. That is just amazing. Let's take a look at the back here. So it does not include the Wolverine figure, uh, but I actually have that figure too. I have it uh, sealed in package and I have a loose one. Uh, but you stick the figure on the little platform, you move the lever, and you can like have them fight and train or whatever. Uh, and look at all this other stuff, the, the Wolverine bike, the Magneto mobile, the little cosplay of Magneto and Wolverine and Cyclops. Oh yeah, and Cyclops' is little, uh, uh, little practice room or whatever you call that. How cool is this? Uh, these are from the 90s, I believe. Uh, 1994. How awesome is that? And they are sealed in the packaging. So here is Cyclops Light Force Arena, also sealed in the packaging from the 90s. Uh, super cool. And, you know, I just was really, really excited to find these. And uh, like I said, I had them when I was a kid. Uh, they don't include the figures, but they have the cool little play sets. Uh, so my buddy was uh, selling these, I think for like 30 or something, uh, 30 something dollars a piece. Uh, but he said he would sell them to me for 20 bucks a piece. And I just had to jump on it. I love these old Toy Biz X-Men figures. I mean, how fun, how awesome. So we got the uh, Danger Room, uh, Cyclops Light Force Arena, and we have the Wolverine Combat Cave. Got them both for 20 bucks each. They're sealed in the packaging. Just some classic Toy Biz 90s Marvel stuff. Really excited about these. All right, so that was my haul from this local comic show. This was the Comic and Toy Show of New Egypt, New Jersey. Uh, it's hosted by Comics Layer, a guy named Chad who's an awesome guy and always puts on really great shows. I've been to this show many times as a customer. I've always found really cool stuff. You've probably seen a handful of videos um, of me going to this show buying stuff, uh, but this was my first time selling there. And I was just really happy to be able to get a table. I was able to move a whole bunch of comics out of my inventory. And I, uh, you know, I saw some fans of the channel and I saw some friends and met some new friends. And I had so much fun. I got some really cool comics. I got some really cool toys and I just had so much fun. Uh, so definitely check out the New Egypt Comic and Toy Show if you're in the area. They hold it every few months, um, you know, here and there. J uh, follow them on Instagram. You can stay up to date or I'll try to post some links, uh, you know, down in the description. But like I said, I set up a table there. I sold a bunch of keys off my wall. I sold a whole bunch of my dollar books. Uh, I had everything priced at a dollar. And then at the end of the day... Uh, after most of the stuff was picked through, I dropped everything down to 50 cents a comic and people were just rushing in and buying stuff. It was so much fun. I was selling trade paperbacks and graphic novels for a dollar each, which everyone kept, uh, you know, commenting on how they've never seen anyone sell you know, trade paperbacks for a buck a piece. Yeah, that's what I was doing. I was just moving stuff, getting rid of it trying to pass on deals to everyone out there. So I had a lot of fun. It was a great show. I got some cool stuff for my collection and I got rid of a bunch of stuff uh, out of my collection that I no longer wanted. So that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed this little video about a local comic book show where I bought some stuff and I sold some stuff. All right, well, if you haven't already, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you can see when I upload my next video. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.